Now at 5 a.m. on WKYT This Morning, we're tracking a developing story out of Frankfurt right now. That's where crews are at the scene of a fire at an apartment complex. Authorities in Nicholasville are trying to find two men. They say carjacked a man at gunpoint and drove them across Jessamine County. And the proposal to hike minimum wage in Lexington has passed. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning. I'm Rebecca Smith. Welcome in on Friday. It is Friday. I'm Bill Bryant. We're glad you're with us. We face changes as we head into the weekend with a little taste of winter. Just a preview, hopefully. Let's check in with meteorologist Micah Harris. It is a preview because once we get past the weekend, we start to see it rise back up. So there's some good news out of this. But uh, what we're looking at this morning, clear skies. And things don't look bad, but they are pretty chilly. We're at 31 degrees in Lexington. We're in the 40s, upper 20s from Kentucky. But all in all, this is a chilly start to the day. Get into the afternoon. It's going to be a cooler day than what we felt yesterday. So just know that once you step out the door, you will need that light coat uh, as you trek off in the afternoon, too. The focus of the forecast, obviously, the winter weather potential. Potential is the key word. I'll explain that and show you the timing on that coming up. Thank you. Right now we are tracking some breaking news out of the country of Mali. The American embassy in that country's capital is urging American citizens to seek shelter after an active shooter situation at a hotel. And this is at the Radisson Hotel there. The gunmen are believed to also be holding hostages right now. The hotel chain says the hostages include 140 guests and 30 employees. No group has claimed responsibility for the attacks at this point. We're tracking the story as it develops. We'll have more just as soon as it's available to us in our newsroom. And developing news we're following out of Franklin County. We've learned that at least one person has been injured in a fire at an apartment complex. Dispatchers tell us the fire broke out at the Country Hill Apartments in Frankfurt. WKYT's Mark Barber is joining us live from the scene with what we know so far. Good morning. Good morning, Bill. Now, crews here on the scene have asked us to set up here near a gas station that is down the road and out of sight of this fire, so we're still not able to get a really good look at what is actually happening out here at this point. However, we have been speaking with an officer here on the scene. He's been answering some of our questions, and he tells us that the fire likely started here at the Country Hills Apartments on Schenkel Lane around 1:45 this morning. Now, because we are not able to talk with fire investigators directly, we have been calling the fire department this morning, trying to get an idea of how serious this fire is, if anybody is hurt. But so far, all calls have not been answered. Now, from what the investigator is saying on the scene. There have been several ambulances coming into and out of this apartment complex. However, that investigator is not able to tell us if those ambulances have been carrying anyone who is hurt. Now, we are also told that the Red Cross is on scene helping people who have been displaced by this fire. What is unclear at this time is how many people might be out of their homes this morning. Now, we do know that Schenkel Lane is closed in both directions because of the fire here. Uh, and again, so they are rerouting traffic. Even some people who live in the apartments here, they're being told to park near this gas station that, again, is just a short walk from these apartments. Then they're able to walk up into their homes. So a lot of this, and there, at this time, there's really no telling how long this could go on. Uh, they say that these closures could stretch into the morning, so we will keep you updated about that. Now, we are told that fire department will give the media a press conference at some point this morning to release more information, more details. Again, at this point, we're still waiting to get an idea of how serious this fire is, if there's any injuries, how it started. So that's everything that we're working on here, trying to gather more information for you. And hopefully we'll have a few more details for you coming up in another live report on WKYT News at 530. Live in Frankfurt, Mark Barber, WKYT. All right, obviously a lot more to uh, still learn on that. Yeah. Thank you. Well, new this morning, there were some scary moments overnight for a man after he was carjacked and kidnapped. Police officers tell us that a man called them saying that he was held up at gunpoint in the Kroger parking lot. WKYT's Mike Byer is live from the Nicholasville Police Department with the, with the details. Good morning, Mike. Good morning, Bill and Rebecca. That's right. Late last night, while getting gas, a Lexington man was robbed at gunpoint. Police say. Police say his car and other personal items were then stolen. At around 10 o'clock last night, the victim was getting gas at the Kroger gas station at Brandon Crossing. Police say that's when two armed men approached him. Police then say the two suspects forced the man into his car by gunpoint, making him drive to the Camp Nelson Bridge at the Kentucky River. Police say there, the victim, or there, they took his car, wallet, and money. From there, the victim walked into a friend's house who gave him a ride back to Lexington. Once home, the man called Lexington police shortly before 2 a.m. 
Now, even though the victim called Lexington police, it's Nicholasville police who are handling the case since the incident took place here in Jessamine County. I'll have more information as it becomes available, so hopefully we can uh, get some more details to you coming up at WKYT News at 530. But for now, live in Nicholasville, Mike Byer, WKYT. Investigators are still searching this morning for one of three suspects involved in a multi-state burglary spree that crossed Kentucky. Police say Kareem Brown is still on the run. He ran off after a police chase ended on I-75 in Scott County yesterday morning. The chase started in Grant County, and at times, police clocked the suspect driving over 140 miles an hour. When the chase ended at the Toyota plant in Georgetown, police arrested 19-year-old David Scott and 20-year-old Christopher Wooten. People living in the area say they're taking extra precautions as police search. I recently just got my conceal and carry, and I did get it because you never know who is out there nowadays. It's uh, scary, and you, I mean, you could walk up to a random person and not know what their background is. They could be the nicest person in the world, and then they you turn up your shoulder and they're threatening you or stealing something from you. The two suspects already in custody were wanted out of Ohio for allegedly stealing $10,000 worth of jewelry from a home. Police also think they are responsible for burglaries in Lexington, Bourbon County, and Harrison County. New this morning, a Richmond man accused of shooting and killing the father of his ex-girlfriend has now been arraigned. According to the Richmond Register, 22-year-old Joshua Brown may not be medically able to attend his preliminary hearing December 2nd. Police say he shot himself in the head after shooting and killing 57-year-old Stephen Martin back in October. A month later, the daughter of a man who was shot and killed by state police is breaking her silence. Last month, police were called to 53-year-old Stephen Brock's Knott County home after they say he made some threats. Police say Brock refused their orders and made an aggressive move, so trooper Luke Pridemore shot and killed him. But Brock's daughter says he was not armed at the time. They never found a gun. He never had a weapon. So it really is a wrongful death. And... I really need something to be done about it, and it will. She says her father did have some mental health issues. State police would not comment on her claims. New this morning, an eastern Kentucky man has been charged with prostitution after police say he tried to exchange sex for a hunting trip and money. Police say a traffic stop led them to 34-year-old Robert uh, Blake Robert. The arresting officer told authorities that he found a wig, fake breasts, and lotion in the car. They say Robert and Jonathan Castle met online and agreed to the arrangement. Castle is charged with DUI and other traffic violations. After nearly nine months of debate, the Urban County Council has passed a minimum wage hike in Lexington. That hike will be carried out over the next three years and will increase minimum wage from $7.25 to $10.10 an hour. The wage would go up to $8.20 an hour on July 1st of next year. It would then go up to $9.15 an hour the following July, then $10.10 an hour by 2018. The decision took nearly three hours to discuss. Many council members say the decision was not an easy one. This is my fifth year on council. This has been the most difficult issue I think we have dealt with. The Kentucky Supreme Court will have to decide whether cities have the authority to set their own minimum wage after Louisville became the Commonwealth's first city to do so last year. Well, the Commonwealth Office of Technology is warning state government employees about possible so-called social engineering attacks. The office says it's received credible threats to state government resources based on events in the Middle East. The office warns employees about giving out sensitive information to callers or through email without verifying the source is legitimate. A Lexington-based mining company announcing that it will cut about 200 jobs from sites in eastern Kentucky. Blackhawk Mining said the company will idle the Blue Diamond Buckeye Prep Plant and two supporting mines in Perry County. The company blames market-driven conditions for the decision. Governor-elect Matt Bevan has made a change to plans for his inaugural church service. The service, which begins at 8 a.m. on December 8th, has now been moved to the Frankfurt Convention Center, and it will now be open to the public. Originally, the service was scheduled to be invitation only and at a Frankfurt church. But Governor-elect Bevan's transition team said they moved the service after an overwhelming response from the public. Well, WKYT this morning is just getting started. Great to have you along with us. A lot more news on the way. These bowlers are gobbling up strikes, all for a good cause. We'll show you more of this interesting bowling technique after weather.
temperatures in the 30s this morning. It is on the chilly side, and then as we slide throughout your afternoon, lower 50s, but that's going to be the warmest temperature you see in a while. I'll have that forecast coming up next.